Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, cracking down on crime in the Star City. How leaders are working with local businesses to address concerns. And a local school board meeting gets heated. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. And you should be protecting our children. The rising tensions between parents as schools navigate new transgender inclusive policies. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. And I'm John Carlin. Since a shooting in a crowded downtown Roanoke just over two weeks ago, city leaders are working to address the rise in gun violence. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder joins us now live tonight with reaction from downtown business owners on the gun violence prevention efforts. Annie? Yeah, John and Lindsay, well, city leaders have been working with several business owners here downtown to see if they can improve safety measures. But some we spoke with today say that change isn't happening soon enough. Safety is a top concern for small businesses downtown like Ernie's. Shootings happen everywhere, unfortunately, nowadays, and, you know, we're no different. After a shooting near Market Square almost two weeks ago, the city started looking at ways it can address concerns for small business owners. We want to make sure that businesses throughout our city uh, have input and uh, can be a part of the solution. City Councilor Joe Cobb says one of the top concerns he heard was although there were at least nine police officers downtown at the time of the shooting, it still happened. Kind of this strange feeling that the people who are doing the shooting don't really care. It's like, so, but the businesses care. Cobb also leads the city's gun violence prevention commission and says it was important to share their efforts and show how other neighborhoods have similar experiences. Downtown is a neighborhood, just like uh, Gainesboro is a neighborhood, just like Morningside's a neighborhood, Belmont, um, Melrose. So we're all in this together. But still, for places like Ernie's, the changes can't come soon enough. It's getting harder every week. I mean, with the shootings, the homeless, I mean, the, you know, just there's a lot of bad things going on right now around everywhere. Cobb says the city is doing everything in its power to address the violence and systemic issues that come with it so everyone can enjoy it and feel safe. We believe that to reduce violence in any form in our city, we need our business community part of that. We need our nonprofit community. We need our neighborhood groups. We need our citizens. Now, some businesses have started putting up lighting since the shooting happened, but they say that this parking lot right here downtown remains an area of concern because of a lack of security cameras. Live in downtown Roanoke tonight, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. The death of a seven-year-old Rocky Mount boy has been ruled a homicide. According to the Roanoke Medical Examiner's Office, Hunter Cumby died from blunt force trauma to the head. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says he was taken to the hospital on June 30th. After a reported fall, he died two days later. 50-year-old John Abel, the boy's grandfather and caretaker, has been charged with felony child abuse. He's being held without bond. All right, turning now to your forecast, where most of us are seeing calmer skies after yesterday's rain. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz joins us now. So, Jeff, you're actually still tracking a few showers out there, but just not a whole lot. There's not on. a whole lot. Yeah, and this front that has pushed through the region is actually not really even going to cool us down or lower our humidity. That probably won't happen here for about the next seven to 10 days, so it's going to stay pretty hot and pretty humid. You'll notice that we do have one little shower, say, towards Nelson County. We've got actually a severe thunderstorm warning just south of the border into northern North Carolina and places like Surrey County, North Carolina. These are heading to the east, northeast, and may clip portions of south side here over the next hour or so, but it looks like the worst of these cells will actually just stay south of the border into northern North Carolina. Satellite radar composite showing that we've got this front that is pushing through right now behind it. High pressure is going to briefly build in for Saturday, and that means for us a pretty nice start to the weekend. This evening can't rule out a stray shower or thunder shower. Otherwise, we're warm and muggy. Temperatures at 7 o'clock, middle 80s, falling into the mid to upper 70s by around 10. We even have a little bit of patchy fog developing later tonight. What we're tracking here, well, Elsa has moved well to the northeast. No longer are we going to see any rain from her. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will rule the roost for us here each day here over about the next five to seven days, and the summer heat is no doubt returning. It is going to be quite hot and quite humid here for quite some time. John. 
Vaccinated teachers and students will not need to wear masks inside school buildings, according to new guidance from the CDC. Right now, kids as young as 12 are able to get shots. Schools in our region say they're waiting for additional guidance from the Department of Education, the State Health Department, and the governor to make a decision. The biggest questions will be at middle schools where some students can get the shot and others can't. I think they should still be wearing masks for their safety and everybody else's. We've been saying all along that students should be in school and shouldn't necessarily be tied to masks. We are working to learn more about what schools plan to do this fall, and we're expect expecting to have more information for you on that early next week. Well, of course, life is returning to normal with COVID-19 restrictions lifting, but the toll from the virus is still evident. Galax was hit the hardest in Virginia with the highest case, hospitalization and death rates. Now we want to note of the city's 53 total deaths, more than half were from outbreaks at long term care facilities. Highland County has the lowest case, hospitalization and death rates. Health leaders say the pandemic brought disparities to light. Whether it's by geography, whether it's by race or ethnicity, whether it's by income, when we see disparities like this and we see profound disparities in Southwest Virginia, it just makes me feel, what can we do better? She says getting the vaccine will be the biggest factor in protecting communities moving forward. Public schools across Virginia are having to create inclusive policies for transgender and non-binary students before the start of the upcoming school year. 10 News reporter Sydney Jacksheimer shares the different sides that parents and school leaders in Botetourt County are taking. Dozens of parents took the stand at the Botetourt County School Board meeting Thursday night to share their thoughts about the state's required inclusive policies for transgender students. Many parents spoke in opposition of students using bathrooms based on gender identity. You are setting your children up for total failure. You're setting your daughters up to be attacked in their bathrooms. You are setting your sons up to be accused of attacking girls and bathrooms. According to the Virginia Department of Education, inclusive policies must be adopted by the upcoming 2021-22 school year. A retired teacher spoke in support of these required changes. If I were in the classroom today, I would use whatever pronoun necessary to make your child feel comfortable and feel safe because it costs me nothing to be kind. The Botetourt superintendent says their school's policy is already meeting the state's inclusivity standards, so no changes will be made right now. In Botetourt County, Sydney Jacksheimer, 10 News, working for you. School leaders in Bedford County are also addressing concerns where they say critical race theory will not be taught in classrooms. The school board met last night and discussed updates to the K through 12 curriculum, which they say are being implemented by Virginia's Department of Education. Leaders say it does not include critical race theory, but so-called culturally responsive teaching. Culturally responsive teaching, CRT, attempts to bridge the gap between teachers and student by helping the teacher understand the cultural nuances that shape a student. The updates include changing certain language and making historical events more accurate. Two controversial Confederate statues in downtown Charlottesville will come down tomorrow. The city installed temporary fencing today around the Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson statues as it prepares to relocate them. According to the city, both statues will be stored in a secure location until leaders make a final decision where they will go. The stone bases will remain for now. You may remember a group of white supremacists began at these statues during the 2017 Unite the Right rally, leaving three people dead. We are working for you, bringing you live coverage from Charlottesville tomorrow at 6 a.m. on Virginia Today. A local company has bought the rights to the Roanoke Star for the next year. How that money will all go back to the community. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of two 2021 Emmy Awards for Best Daytime Newscast and Best Evening Newscast. While the Roanoke Star has a brand new owner, the Kiwanis Club of Roanoke auctioned off the landmark to raise money for community projects and scholarships. Lionberger Construction had the winning bid with more than $1,000. Uh, the company received a plaque this morning at the Star.
One of our Qantas members had this idea and reached out to city staff and uh, the city council and they agreed that it would be great, a great fundraiser, a nice idea. And so we have an agreement with the city to do this uh, annually uh, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing that relationship. And it's a great investment for a thousand bucks. You own the star. The company will own the star for a year. Get your popcorn ready. The Grandin Theater in Roanoke has finally returned to showing newly released movies. Starting today, people can see Black Widow, In the Heights, My Octopus Teacher, and The Father. To start, the theater will only screen movies on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. For more movie times and more information, head to our website, WSLS.com. And we're getting our dancing shoes ready in the banjos tune. The Friday Night Jamboree is back here in Floyd. I'm Shane Dwyer. We'll show you all the fun coming up in just a few minutes. And you are looking at a live picture from our Roanoke Blacksburg Airport sky cam. A couple of clouds here or there. Otherwise, our fair share of sunshine, our fair share of blue skies. We will, however, let you know when the chance for rain again increases coming up. We're heading to the Floyd Country Store, where the Friday Night Jamboree is back in full effect. The local staple went on a hiatus because of COVID restrictions. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is live at the Floyd Country Store tonight. So Shane, how's the crowd looking out there? We can hear them. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, Lindsay and John, things starting to fill in. You know, you see a lot of empty chairs here in the room right now, but every single one of these chairs has a little flyer on it. You can see it says this seat reserved for, which means it is going to be a full crowd here this evening. Now, it's been more than a year since people have been able to gather here in the Floyd Country Store. Now, the Friday Night Jamboree is really, it sounds cliche, but I promise you, is known across the country as a bluegrass staple. It's also a huge economic driver here for the area. Over the last 18 months, they've done virtual shows and then they did some shows out on the backyard, but they say that nothing compares to being back inside for the real thing. Talked to a couple that's out front waiting um, in line for the next hour to get tickets, and they came to visit us from Texas. And I don't know that they necessarily intended it to land on our first day or it happened that way, but um, I think people are really thrilled to be able to come and see us again in a, in a pretty normal way. Now they are expecting a full sellout crowd here tonight, and I can tell you right now, people walking in, you can feel the energy. They are excited. There are lots of smiles. Back out with us live here tonight. I did not bring my dancing shoes this evening. We'll decide whether that's fortunate or unfortunate for the group here. But I know that plenty of other people did, so they're ready to have a good old time. We'll show you all the smiles and all the fun coming up tonight on 10 News at 11. Live in Floyd, Shane Dwyer, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Hi there, friends. I'm meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz. You'll notice one little shower towards northern Nelson County. We've got a little more rain and thunderstorms out across northern North Carolina. These are actually heading to the east and for the most part will stay to the south of us into northern North Carolina. Could there be a rogue shower or thunder shower in Henry or Pennsylvania counties here over the next hour or two? Sure, there could be, but the bulk of this is staying to the south into the Tar Heel state. The new drought monitor came out yesterday, and you'll notice that our border counties with West Virginia, you're fully out of the drought. You're under a drought watch. It's called abnormally dry for areas in yellow, and that's most of the viewing area. You will also notice that our southeasternmost counties, portions of Charlotte, Halifax, and Pennsylvania counties are still in a moderate drought. Now, again, this came out Thursday, but the data that uh, kind of went into the new drought monitor ended on Tuesday. So keep in mind that areas in this brown color have seen a whole lot of rain here over the last 36 to 48 hours. So maybe just maybe when the new drought monitor comes out next week, maybe you'll be not in a moderate drought anymore. We'll have to wait and see. Regardless, it looks like Saturday is going to be for the most part dry. A few showers or thunder showers can't be ruled out towards the New River Valley. Otherwise, it looks like as we head into Sunday, that chance for some rain may increase for us. Why? Because we're going to have a front in close proximity to us, and that front will add some instability to the atmosphere and kick off some hit or miss thunder showers, say from the early to mid afternoon hours on. So right now, Sunday looks to be a tad wetter than Saturday, but you need to know Sunday's far from a washout with the first half of Sunday looking pretty dry. Hey, if you're heading to the beaches this weekend, Myrtle Beach are going to be in the middle 80s. Can't rule out the chance for a couple of thunder showers each day because of the sea breeze. Ditto for Wrightsville Beach, middle 80s with maybe a couple of thunder showers Saturday or Sunday. Right now it looks like Monday near Wilmington. You're going to be pretty dry. 
Looks like you're dry Sunday and Monday at Cape Hatteras with a few thunder showers on Saturday. Heading north into Virginia Beach, you're going to have temperatures between 85 and 90 Saturday, Sunday and Monday with a fairly dry forecast intact. All right, the one thing I will mention to you is if you are heading to the beaches, beware really from the North Carolina, South Carolina line all the way towards, say, Ocean City, New Jersey, there's a fairly high chance for some rip current. So Again, if you're going in the water this weekend, if you're going to the Atlantic waters, know that there could be uh, some rip currents to deal with. So uh, exercise a lot of caution if indeed you are headed down that way. What we're tracking here, we're looking at next week being hot and we're looking at next week being humid. With high pressure fairly close to us, the chance for rain may go down a little bit next week. I think Sunday we have about a 40 to 50% chance for some scattered thunder showers. I think that chance for rain may decrease as we head into next week a little bit. Temperatures right now 79 Withville, 88 Roanoke, 80 six as we speak in Danville for tonight. Warm, muggy skies fair overnight lows tonight ranging between 58 and 67. Three days zone by zone forecast showing highs in the NRV in the middle 80s for the next three days for the Highlands. A stray thunder shower can't be ruled out on Saturday. A better chance though as we head into Sunday and Monday and for south side locations are looking at lower 90s this weekend falling into the upper 80s to near 90 on Monday for Lynchburg. Your hottest days will come Sunday through Friday of next week with highs between 90 and 94 all six of those days. And for the Roanoke Valley, scattered thunder showers Sunday. Chance for rain goes down late Monday into Tuesday. May go up a little bit, though, as we head into our hump day next Wednesday. Brooke. Thanks, Jeff. Coming up in sports, Virginia releases their non-conference basketball schedule. We're excited to bring you a new digital-only show beginning on Sunday at 7 p.m. Our own Eric Johnson will bring you inspirational stories from those in and around the Roanoke Valley on Around the Way with EJ. Here's a look at what to expect this week. He took the William Fleming girls basketball program to new heights during his 10 year tenure and in the process started what would become a new venture. The original vision was just to make sure our kids look good out there on the floor. And now Fly Codes has taken flight as an apparel company and full brand benefiting Roanoke and the surrounding areas. But as Champ Hubbard explains, there's more work to be done. We forgot to help out this community and make these kids understand there's other things to do than the foolishness that they choose to do. Join me as I have an open and honest discussion. I told him, like, you're going to be stereotyped the rest of your life because of the color of your skin. With the former coach and now entrepreneur who sheds insight on what we can do to help today's youth. Join me for our inaugural episode of Around the Way with EJ, Sunday at 7 p.m. only on WSLS.com. Smooth. NBC Nightly News coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.